<laughs> yeah, let's go through this article. It's coming from Crypto.News again. Why is Donald Trump calling on the government not to sell Bitcoin? Mm-hmm. Presidential candidate and crypto industry supporter, Donald Trump believes the U.S. government should not sell its cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. During a podcast with Aiden Ross, he mentioned the recent sell of Bitcoin by the U.S. government and asked Trump if he would support crypto if he won the November 2024 election. He was like, if elected, it will be the policy of administration to keep 100% of all the Bitcoin the U.S. government currently holds or acquires into the future. Now, Trump then turned his attention to extolling the virtues of Bitcoin. He called the cryptocurrency very modern and compared it to artificial intelligence. He had added that the U.S. will not innovate in the field of digital assets. Other countries will, including China. So it's like, we got to do it before they do. The most significant geopolitical rival, which is already making progress in the cryptocurrency and artificial intelligence sector. Now, how much Bitcoin does the U.S. actually have on its balance sheet? According to analysis from Arkham Intelligence Platforms in the spring, the U.S. government had more than 210,000 Bitcoin on its balance sheets, making it one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. And yeah, a lot of people didn't realize that. It's like, yeah, we do hold it. Where did we get it? Silk Road, hacks, illegal activities. But we got it on our balance sheets. We have it. Now let's just move it over to the Treasury. But in addition to Bitcoin, the U.S. government had about 200 million in other cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum, as well as Tether and Circle stablecoins. In June, 243 million in Bitcoin was transferred from the U.S. government addressed to the Coinbase exchange. These funds were confiscated from the darknet market operator Ban Meet Singh, who pleaded guilty to drug trafficking and money laundering. And at the end of July, the U.S. government also moved 28,000 Bitcoin to an unknown wallet. Then 19,800 Bitcoin of these coins were sent to one address and 10,000 Bitcoin to another. Now, at the time of writing, uh, according to Arkham Intelligence, the address belonged to the U.S. government stores cryptocurrencies worth $11.1 billion, including more than 203,000 Bitcoin. So we better just keep that. So Trump, get in there so that way we can just be sure we hold it on our treasury. Now, how is the U.S. government sees Bitcoin sold? Since 2014, the U.S. Marshal Service has sold, seized Bitcoin through closed auctions. However, in late June, it was announced that the USMS, as part of the Justice Department responsible for asset forfeiture, had chosen Coinbase Prime to store and trade seized cryptocurrencies. The Coinbase Prime brokerage platform allows clients to store, buy, sell, and invest in cryptocurrencies. It also is the primary partner for spot crypto ETFs out there. And again, when these when the government sells crypto, it's on like again, it's an auction, so it's just going to be peer to peer. It doesn't affect the price at all. Real, the price is really affected when it's being like sold or moved on exchanges out there and whatnot. But when it's just peer to peer, the price isn't affected, and that's usually what they want to so keep it low. That's what the elites want. Now, what is Trump's plan for the government and seize Bitcoin? At the Bitcoin 2024 conference, Trump announced his intention to create a strategic reserve of Bitcoin. He emphasized that cryptocurrencies can be essential to the country's economic competitiveness and promised never to sell Bitcoin confiscated by the U.S. government. Republican Senator Cynthia Loomis is in support of Trump's statement and announced plans to introduce a bill to purchase 1 million Bitcoin for the U.S. Treasury, which is 5% of the assets total supply. If you still have 200,000, we just need 800,000 more to go. But however, Loomis and Trump are far from the first to suggest introducing Bitcoin to government reserves. Michael Saylor, the former head of the MicroStrategy software developer, also expressed such thoughts. He proposed purchasing $4 million of Bitcoin for the U.S. Treasury. And in addition, ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood also supported using Bitcoin as a reserve. She noted that this will only be a matter of time for the first cryptocurrency and is not an instrument of monetary policy, but is simply on the U.S. balance sheets. Now, which countries out there have the most Bitcoin? Let's find out. While investors buy Bitcoin on the open market by investing in real money states, more often obtain Bitcoin through confiscation, governments are among the largest holders of Bitcoin due to seizures of criminal activity. Of all the countries holding Bitcoin, only El Salvador actually buys this crypto since 2021 and mines it too as part of the state-run Volcano Energy Initiative, which uses geothermic energy. Neither the United States, China, the United Kingdom, nor Germany have ever officially purchased cryptocurrency. However, thanks to confiscations from criminals, governments of large countries have accumulated crypto assets worth billions of dollars. Now, according to the Bitcoin Treasury Service, the combined crypto reserves of countries are estimated at around 517,000 Bitcoin, or more than 28 billion. So, yeah, let's see. Uh, U.S. has about 213,000 Bitcoin. Let's see. China's got 190,000. United Kingdom coming in third with 61,000. 
Ukraine 46, El Sabor making its way up. The other one's buying up. They position themselves so well. <laughs> but yeah, the U.S. government is considered the largest holder of Bitcoin among all other countries. China is in second place. And uh, let's see uh, what I just say. United Kingdom comes in third place with that. Now, is Trump right for doing this? Uh, yes, Trump believes that the decision to store assets will become the core of the BTC Strategic National Reserve and express confidence that Bitcoin will overtake gold and silver in market capitalization, which I cannot wait to see for that happen. But however, Bitcoin reserves have drawbacks. The main one is significant volatility. This is the problem faced by authorities of El Salvador, whose BTC reserves have decreased by a third due to a severe drop in Bitcoin's value. I'm pretty sure I covered an article saying they're still in the green, so they're fine. <laughs> so yeah, just because it dropped a third, they're still green, and that's fine. Nevertheless, BTC reserves can be beneficial in terms of diversification. Countries may seek to create alternative assets outside of traditional centralized financial systems, and in addition, some countries may seek ways to conduct international sentiments by bypassing the restrictions and imposed on conventional financial transactions. So yeah, so that's everything you need to know on which countries hold Bitcoin, what Trump's views are on it, what we plan on doing with it. And yeah, the US government is the biggest holder if you didn't know, so now you do. But that is all, at least the political news I had cover for you. Just uh, Harris uh, chose a VP that's not so crypto friendly. We'll see if they change that at all. And just Trump's plan on why he wants the government not to sell it. But that is all the news articles for you. Let me see.